This video explains the standard operating procedures that are used at the Svartberg drop zone. Approximately 15 minutes before boarding, you will receive a gear up call. You are supposed to get ready immediately. Please go, fully geared up, to the boarding area at the corner of the next hangar. Inform the load manager about the composition of your group and about what kind of jump you are going to do. Standing together in groups helps the load manager to efficiently determine the exit order. Make sure you know your place in this order and that you are aware of the groups that jump before and after you and what type of jumps they are performing. The drop zone and surrounding area. The yellow marked rectangular zone at the bottom left of the photo is the airfield where we take off. The drop zone itself is about 2.5 kilometers north of this and is indicated in a green area surrounded by a green circle. Apart from the landing zone, there are a lot of open fields in the area that can serve as an alternative in case of a possible outlanding. The fields indicated in green are largely free of obstacles. The red zones are not suitable for landing. These are the industrial area, the residential area, and the airfield itself. A house near the primary landing zone with a fence is also a possible obstacle. To the east, there is also a power line that you must consider if you ever find yourself in that area. Landing zones, landing direction, and the landing pattern. The landing zone is divided into a main landing zone and a high speed zone. In both areas, you must land according to the direction of the orange arrow. The main and high speed zones are separated by a narrow buffer zone to avoid conflicts. You are expected to fly a left or right hand landing pattern as indicated by the arrow located on the drop zone. Follow the arrow, do not follow the windsock. The industry area marked in red is a no fly zone. If you find yourself in this zone just after the drop, try to leave it as soon as possible. The high speed landing zone may not be crossed below 1000 feet. On the main landing zone, you are supposed to land according to a 90 degree landing pattern. You are only allowed to land in the high speed landing zone if you have a D license and make a final turn of 270 degrees. You are expected to fly a left or right hand landing pattern depending on the landing direction indicated by the orange arrow. The arrow is set by the DZO depending on the wind direction. Here you can see a right hand pattern landing south. A left hand pattern heading north. In a north south landing direction you will always approach the drop zone from the west. If the crosswind from the east or west is too strong the high speed landing zone will be closed. This can be recognized by the direction of the arrow. From this time forward, there is no restriction for crossing the high speed landing zone anymore and it is no longer allowed to make 270 degree landings. So all landings are 90 degrees or less. Here you can see the landing direction towards the west, towards the east, or even diagonally across the landing zone in very strong winds. In this case, you will always approach the drop zone from the south. If you want to reach the drop zone at a low altitude in an emergency situation and have to cross the high speed zone below 1000 feet, then always do this at the end of the drop zone. With a northern landing direction, this is on the north side. This is to avoid landing conflicts in the high speed landing zone with people setting up their 270 degree turn. And it's on the south side with a southern landing direction. Always keep your eyes open, pay attention to each other, and keep it safe. Thank you.